Hello folks, welcome back, and I figured I'd record something really, really quick. You see the Definer class Assault Frigate, and I'm actually going to give you the interior tour if you haven't seen the uh, ship already. And yeah, you're, uh, you're also going to see where I've planted a bunch of warheads, including makeshift rigged up stuff like that. Um, all linked into the systems, that way I can... You know, I didn't want the full-size warhead to... Uh, you know, blow out everything in the cargo bay. I just wanted, you know, a bunch of little explosions that might equal, you know, something. But the hardest part was getting the ship to split right aft of the uh, uh, firewall, which is right in front of the two four jump drives. And so as you notice, I've got a, quite a bit of explosives planted here, and I wanted to actually shear off so that way, you know, so I've got just explosives, explosives all on the inside. So not only to take out this stuff here and knock out as much as I can, um, one on each side to kill the jump drives, because that's the whole point of the scenario, is to kill the jump drives, but also to wipe out, like, say, the armor over here, and some of the thrusters, and, you know, all these little things, you know, it's all going to be planted where you yourself cannot see it from the aft. You know, there is going to be one bit of explosive here, but nothing over here, because this is where it's going to be landed on. And, yeah, right here. So I'm literally trying to blow out the firewall so the front of the ship just snaps straight off. I should have renamed the ship. All right. So, in fact, what we're going to do is blow it straight off, send the nose towards the careening towards the planet. Uh-huh. Actually, I'm going to take control of the remote here. Once I find the remote. There we are. Remote control. Control. G. Groups. Boom. Yeah. Watch the explosion. Oh, yeah. There we are. Oh, nice, nice. I'm in control of it. And since that took out the remote, I've got to get back in. So you see the damage that's been done. The bow of the ship is now floating free, which was the intent. I wanted the ship's nose to be just completely blown straight off. The main reactor might or might not survive. One of the engines at least will be knocked out. It'll have supplies just drifting all over the place. Odds are this thing will actually survive. Gravity will be out. So, and here's what I'm talking about when I said critical damage on the, uh, uh, when I say critical damage on the, uh, ship's description. This thing's still fully maneuverable. Although I'm still chunking parts out of it from everywhere. Yeah, say bye-bye, Nose Cone. You're heading toward the planet. Alright, so we're going to park right here real quick. And maybe just, you know... I'm not going to save this. Uh, this is the pre-explosion. This is the first backup. So I'm just going to send this thing off into the planetary gravity well at full speed. But yeah, here's what I mean by critical damage. Even at this level of damage, the thing is still capable of full maneuvers. Breaking thrust. I can escape, I can get out, I can do whatever I need to. And come on, come on. We'll escape out of this hull breach. Whee! I'm in the planetary gravity well, so that's just going to go crash into the lake bed below or something. I don't know. I don't care, really. All right, so we're looking at the debris field, and there we are. Yeah, watch that thing fall into the gravity well. All right, so we've got a few hulls, some of which we might be able to identify. Uh, the first is a Europa IMDC, uh, an IMDC Europa class carrier that I basically gutted and then cut in half with explosives, and I'm not sure, but I think.
half of it might have drifted into the atmosphere and crashed on the planet. I'm, I didn't see it do that, so I don't know. Has that thing actually started breaking? Is there enough thrust left in the engines to break? I don't know. Don't care. It wasn't intended to be landed. This was... Now, this part and, consequently, that part were an IMDC Kronos-class frigate that I gutted with explosives and then used a Shrike uh, Omni Fighter to literally just cut in half, stem to stern. The idea is jump drive failures on everything. And this is, I planted like, th it's an MSSV, and I planted three explosives on it, and it, it did get cut in half. I mean, it looks like it's intact, pretty close to intact, but it got cut in half. Yeah, I hurt myself there. It's not going to move. Um, I think that's another MSSV that I cut into bits. Yeah. It's actually still drifting. Just a little bit. Okay, this thing, I don't know if you even recognize any of it, but given that there are four parts to the bow and black rocket launchers and red highlighting, this is actually the initial prototype I built in Super Survival. Um, absolutely, utterly, and completely gutted and devastated, and I think I saw part of the industrial section flying off in that direction somewhere. I don't know. It flew off. I don't know where. I blew up another couple... No, there it is, actually. To the reactors, uh, basically offline and everything. Did that thing finally escape into the... Uh... Nope, it's... Wow. Okay, well, I'm going to get into this thing and crash into the surface again. Before all my hydrogen and oxygen runs out. Boom, 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 boom. I'm blowing up my ship. And I spent quite a bit of time building and designing these ships. Yeah, I mean, take a look at this. How many ships would even be remotely functional at this uh, level of damage? Granted, most of the function left is still on the... Uh, bow, but I've still got three Gatlings. I can still sweep some t fighters off my sky. I think I'm just going to nose first to this thing and see how much damage it does. Yeah, it came to a dead stop. That's hilarious. Alright, well, let's fire engines. I'm just going to aim straight at the, uh... Alright, well... While we're on the way down and everything, I'm going to, uh... Kind of, you know, I made some serious mistakes when uh, filming the original of this. Um, especially on the audio, and there are mistakes that you know, I should have known better. I, I did audio work, but it was like 10 years ago. But I should have known better, you know. I should have recorded the, my part of it over as a second track overlay of this. It's been so long since I've done it, though. And a lot of reasons are personal and health-related. Um... The long and short of it is, is I was assaulted. And I'm not saying this to, you know, get any kind of sympathy, because I don't want your sympathy. I mean, I don't want pity or anything. You know, just, you know, so you understand uh, why I might sound the way I do sometimes. When I'm doing my live play stuff, I'm going to be using a different headset. It's a lightweight behind-to-the-head headset that doesn't give me blinding headaches. Reason being is I was assaulted about 10 years ago now, and I suffered multiple concussions uh, from from it because I fought back instead of just you know staying down I, I'm either too stubborn or too stupid to give up except you know basically with this I, it's what I did I I gave up on my audio work um, but when I couldn't even wear a, a, a proper set of cans and a year later get trying to get back into it who couldn't even wear a proper set of cans on my head without getting a blinding headache within 30 seconds 
you know, I can't wear a baseball cap. I cannot wear any kind of over-the-head headset, and that's exactly what I'm wearing right now, recording this bit. Um, you know, and I've got it loosened, trying not to rest it on top of my head, so I get a headache. It's deferred, actually, and delayed, as opposed to, you know, it's blinding right off the bat. But I suffer from sinus headaches. Uh, my sinuses fill up with mucus far, far too fast. I saw a neurologist for six months, and an ear, note throws doctor in, ear nose, and throat doctor uh, for, uh, several times. And basically, they, uh, the gist of it was, we can't do anything for you. So, you know, I mean, I suffer from blinding sinus headaches and blinding migraines both, whereas I didn't before then. Um, I've practically lost a sense of smell, and, I mean, it has to be really, really strong for me to smell it. I mean, dead skunk on the middle of the road, and I'm driving right past it, not even going to wrinkle my nose, because I don't smell it. Um... And it's also why sometimes you just hear me, I'm trying to clear my nose discreetly, or I just suffer with the nose whistle because, quite frankly, my my, no, my, nasal, my nasal cavity and my nose just fills up with mucus so fast it's not funny. I can clear my nose and five minutes later I'm whistling again through my nose. Um... And like I said, I'm not doing that for pity. I'm not telling you this. I'm just saying this so that we, you understand, you know, why, you know, <laughs> I sound the way I do sometimes. Um, if you hear the lower quality headset, it's because it's it's cheap little behind a head thing that I can actually stand to wear for more than five, ten minutes at a time. Anyway, we are now approaching the planet surface. Um, as far as my bitch and Betty, that was actually my dear and kind mother that I had. Uh, she's done some uh, amateur voice work, and it's kind of where I got some of my talent, too. Uh, she's done some amateur voice work and even a couple of commercials in uh, local commercials here. And so I told her ba I, I wanted a bitch and Betty and then uh, played back some of what uh, the FA-18's bitch and Betty says. Uh, wrote a basic script and had her quote it. I mean, that was literally the second read. She did a dry read off mic and then a uh, straight read there, and that's what she got. Um, it's only a failure of my editing skills because they're 10 years out of date and I'm using a program I'm not familiar with to do so, um, which is Audacity, by the way, and I like what I'm seeing so far with it. It's not what I used to use, but mm, whatever. I'll learn it. Anyway, um, just let you guys know, you know, that's what's up. This is a little bit of behind the scenes. I don't think I'm going to land anywhere in the same area. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I am seeing, maybe that's a shadow. Maybe that's, I don't know, but I'm going to try to aim for that. That's, that might be a chunk of my ship that landed. Maybe the nose cone. I think that is literally a debris field, and I'm just going to try to aim straight at it then. See what I come down in the middle, because I'm seeing a hint of red uh, halfway between the crosshair and uh, top of the screen, although it's rapidly approaching the top of the screen. Well, we'll see how much of my... Uh, Nose gets completely taken out. I'm going to actually angle a little bit so the damage is on the top still rather than the bottom. Use my remaining ventral thrusters to try to stabilize and uh, push me up toward it. Whee! And just let the ship drift otherwise. Oh yeah, we're heading straight down. Wow, pancake. 
escaped. Alright, is it remotely at rest? Here, let's just use the gyros. And... That power off. There we go. Oh, ship's still going to roll a little bit. Alright, so I think I saw a bit of wreckage off of this away. Show sure enough. What is it? What is it? What's this wreckage? What's this wreckage? Oh my god, it is the command section of the carrier. Ha! Let's see. What survived? I don't know. I'm not going to care at the moment. I'm going to explore, explore it later on the live map. Okay. And I think I saw something else this away, and I'm bouncing. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Well, whatever. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of behind the scenes. And I hope you like the new Crash Survival series. I'm going to be trying, putting my absolute best work into both the uh, uh, audio design and everything, or the audio work especially, while I'm learning the visual editing and stuff. And where did I park? Eh, I knew I should have left the ship on. I might have been able to see the blinky lights. Here, ship, 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 ship. This way, I think. Somewhere, maybe. Possibly. On the other side of these trees, someplace. Oh well. I'm going to be working on uh, shooting episode 2 very shortly. I still have a lot of background work to do for what I have plotted and scripted out. And as a side note, I am looking for someone to design a ship for me. If you think, uh, I, I will be looking on the workshop for a uh, similar design, and if, you know, if any of you think you can design a ship for me uh, to use, uh, and use whatever mods you think you want, all I want, uh, all I will say here and now without private messaging is it has to be looking really, really high tech, really, really cool, and really, really, um, going to put this unique unique so use whatever mods you think you may or may not want or need um, and let me know what the mods are um, let's just simply say it does not need to look conventional nor terrestrial and I'll leave it at that I will see you guys around